This message is one of the Times Square Church pulpit series. It was recorded in the sanctuary of Times Square Church in Manhattan, New York City. Other tapes are available by writing World Challenge, P.O. Box 260, Lindale, Texas, 75771, or calling 903-963-8626. None of these messages are copyrighted, and you are welcome to make copies for free distribution to friends. Uh, I pray tonight that uh, God give you a hearing ear to hear what he has to say. I, I don't know when this is going to end as far as these prophecies on what's coming to America. All I can tell you is that I pray and seek the Lord and this is what he gives me and I can't preach anything but what he tells me to preach. So I have to give it to you because I have no other place to preach right now. And uh, this, this church, I don't know if you know it or not, you serve as a sounding board. You, you, it's preached here, and of course the messages that are preached here go to nearly a million people on the mailing list, and then uh, books and so forth. And so uh, you're more or less uh, a sounding board for this. God tries it out on you, and you're the first to hear it, and then it, this... Uh, I don't know where this part of a message tonight goes, but I, I do believe that God wants me to preach it tonight. It's called Perfect Peace in a Time of Panic. There's a panic coming to America, and God wants his children to have perfect peace in that time. And uh, I need your prayers that the Lord will help me deliver this in the right spirit and with great love and compassion. Uh, folks, I love America. I love this nation. Uh, I, I, I take that in the right context, not like I love God or my family, but I thank God for America and its freedom. And many of you have come from other countries here, and it's because of the freedom and the prosperity this country has had and the opportunities, and that's all well and good. <clears throat> but nevertheless, God is about to judge us. God is about to judge this nation, and he always, he said he does nothing except he first warns his people. He always warns. He has watchmen. He has prophets. And I've never believed I was a prophet, but one of his many, many watchmen. Pastor Carter's a strong watchman. He, he's been prophesying for years. And uh, <clears throat> please open your heart as we bring the word. Father, I pray that you speak to us tonight. Let no fear grip our hearts because you've made it very, very clear that these things are going to happen. Jesus, you said perilous times are going to come. You said men's hearts are going to fail them for fear of watching those things coming on the earth. And Lord, one of these days, some generation has to live in the fulfillment of that prophecy. And I believe we are that generation. And I pray, Lord, that you help us sound the alarm. And the only reason I do this tonight, Lord, is because of that scripture I read. If the watchman sees the storm coming, he sees the enemy coming, he doesn't warn the blood will be on his hands. Lord, I don't want any blood on my hands. I want to speak as an oracle of God, only as you lead and direct. And I pray, Lord, you speak to our hearts. And then at the conclusion of this message tonight, may we all with, with joy lift our hearts and our hands and say, God has everything under control. I'm under his control. There's nothing to fear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, last night, I went up to my office across the street on the 38th floor, and I got out some of my old messages preached in 1990 and 91, and I started reading them. And I, I was shocked at what I was seeing because I was talking this way 10 years ago, uh, or nine years ago especially. In 1991, for example, I pulled out a message that I'd preached from this pulpit, and at that time, Unemployment was raging here in the city. The stock market was on a downhill uh, run. Uh, this was uh, about a year and a half after the uh, October crash. And uh, there, there were no, uh, real estate was dead. Uh, tremendous unemployment. There was fear everywhere. And I came to this pulpit and I preached a message on the desolation of America, I believe it was, and uh, I, I made a statement, and I read it, and it shocked me. 
I said the worst thing God can do to America now is because if, if we don't learn from what's happening now, from the unemployment, the stock market shaking, and the unemployment, the, the, the real estate collapse, buildings here, uh, real estate absolutely collapsed in this city. No building was going on whatsoever, hardly. No tall buildings, nothing. The office uh, uh, space was glutted. Uh, in some sections of lower Manhattan, 40% vacancy. And I said, the worst thing that God could do would be to send a big wave of prosperity, that the stock market would go up again, and there'd be a wave of prosperity, because if God does that, we know that it's the last mercy call just before judgment. And I read that, and it, there, there was something came over my spirit because I had already prepared this message, and uh, sometimes, you know, I, I read some of the prophecies God gave me over the past years, and I went home the other night and said, hey, I've been saying this for a long time, and I haven't seen it happen yet. But I don't know the time. I don't know when what I'm talking about tonight, and I've been talking to you lately, is going to happen. I honestly believe that probably next year we're going to see the beginning of an of a absolute shaking of the stock market. I believe there is going to be a stock market crash, a tremendous crash. And I, I believe probably before it happens, the big corporations, they always know how to get out. They may get out before the, the Great Depression in the 1929 and 1930, 31. Uh, many of the big corporations got out. Some of the wealthy men got out and they cashed out. And then when they had cash, they bought up everything when it was so cheap. And the big corporations may get out, but I don't know if you know it or not, there are, I think, two to three trillion dollars of, of money by individual investors, just common people through, through their internet, through their, their computers, and through their, their, their own uh, gambling in the stock market, trillions of dollars. I heard a government official make a statement. He said, people are leveraging their houses. They're, 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 they're getting 110, 115% mortgages on their house, second mortgages, leveraged mortgages. And they're, they're trying to make it rich because there's been, a, a, like in the past four months, 15% increase in the stock market or so, and uh, especially in, in the top 100 stocks. And this government official, I mean bluntly, said, you're going to lose it all. We're heading for troubled waters, and you have leveraged it. You're going to lose your homes. And he was warning Americans, not a preacher, but warning Americans, get out of the stock market. Quit gambling. This, was one of, this is one of, of the advisors of the leaders of this nation. It wasn't for me. If, if I said something like that, it's just a, a preacher uh, on a soapbox, but this was from a government official. Millions of Americans have shut their eyes to the blatant sins of our leadership. You know what they're saying now? We don't care if our leaders are fornicators, adulterers. We don't care if they cover up their sins. We don't care if they perjure themselves. We don't care if any of this. Now, folks, I'm not judging anybody. But I'm saying the whole attitude now, uh, all across the country, by almost 75 to 80 percent of the Americans who've been polled now, say it doesn't matter whether the president or congressman or anybody else, it doesn't matter about their adultery, fornication, what they do in their private life is their own business as long as we prosper. As long as we have a booming economy, it doesn't matter. Well, folks, God's about to fix that. God's about to fix. God's saying, all right, if that's your attitude, if your morals are so mixed up that you look to the almighty dollar than you do about morality, if the nation is so sunken into that, God says, I'll fix that quickly. And that's exactly what he's about to do. Jeremiah 5, 28, they overlook the deeds of the wicked, yet they prosper. They wink at the deeds. They overlook the deeds of the wicked, yet they prosper. Beloved, I want you to know it's God who controls the economies of the world. It's not the wisdom and the wit of men. The Bible makes that very, very clear. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. 
If you're sitting in this church and you've, if you've accumulated any wealth, whether it be stock market or any other way, you didn't do it by your wit. You may thought you were smart, but the Bible said it's only God who gives you the wisdom to know how to get wealth. All of the, and, and God told Israel, he said, if you in any way, at any time, think that you have done this, it is God that's blessed you, Israel, and if you think for one moment that this has been your own skill, you take credit and you don't give me credit for this, God said, I'll take it all away from you. And I'm going to prove that to you. If thou say in thy heart, my power and my might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth, it shall be... If thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, now that you don't give God credit, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. The word there perish means to be broken, undone, and to lose it all. Doesn't mean death, it means to lose everything. You shall surely lose everything as the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall you lose it all. Just like all the nations before you that thought it was their own doing. He said, you will lose it all. Folks, Wall Street has abandoned God. All of the money makers and all of the, the, the financial institutions in the United States have literally mocked God, pushed him out of sight. Now, now folks, I realize that there are, even in this church, we have stockbrokers. We, we, we have a few CEOs that even attend this church. We have some wealthy people that attend this church, and some them, we have some young currency traders, for example, on Wall Street. I've talked to them. They visited with me, and, and, and they know what I'm talking about. And they're godly men, and I thank God for that. I'm not painting everybody with that same evil brush. And, and, and gentlemen, that, that's a legitimate job. I'm not trying to put you down or anything else on that. I do advise you to be, be very, very cautious in light of what you're hearing prophetically from this pulpit. But when, the Wall, when, when, when Wall Street went to 7,000 points, uh, was, was there anybody that stood there when they rang the bell and said, uh, uh, we thank God that we're being prospered. God has enabled us to accumulate this wealth. When it went to 7,500 points, did you hear anybody talk about God blessing this nation? When it went to 8,000, did you hear anybody in any financial institution anywhere give God an ounce of credit? Did you hear anything when it went to, to 85 and then it broke this past week, 9,000, and then came back down, but it's right hovering around 9,000 now? It may go to 10, it could go eventually to 12 or on, I don't know. They think there's no end to it. but. I hear nothing. I hear not one single word of acknowledgement to Almighty God who said, I have given you this power, and you say this is your skill. I, I heard a financial expert, one of, one of the great um, moguls of finance in the United States, he said, it, we have become the smartest, most skilled financial nation on the face of the earth. Japan said that 10 years ago, and within a year, there was a collapse of the real estate market, there was a collapse of their finances, and now the president of Sony this past week has warned that Japan is going into a depression, and that the president of Japan is like a pilot who's uh, piloting a plane that's going to crash. And he likened the president of, of uh, Japan right now to Herbert Hoover, who told Americans that America was going to prosper, be two cars in every garage and two chickens in every pot just before the Depression hit. All power, all might, and all skill, all knowledge of man has not gotten this wealth. And we have forgotten God in the process. And God has just said, if you at any time forget the Lord God, you do not give him credit, I testify against you that that day comes, you shall surely perish, you shall lose it all, just like all the other nations that have preceded you. If you believe that the Bible is the word of God, you've got to believe that America is going to see its wealth evaporate and perish just as Moses prophesied. Every passing day now brings us closer to the fulfillment of this prophecy of Moses. 
Every day we get closer and closer to the time when this prophecy, God means what he says. You're not giving me credit. You're pushing me out of your society. And silver and gold, the dollar has become your God. Folks, do you know what they're doing in Wall Street? Now, you, you sh uh, New York Times has a picture. They, they talk about uh, flaunting their wealth now. Uh, they, they, they had a word for it, I can't remember, but it, it, it was filthy rich. And they were talking about young, young businessmen now who are making it so big, spending uh, $5,000 for a bottle of wine, buy $100 cigars, and smoking half of them and throwing it away, lighting their cigars with $20 bills. Bible tells us a panic is coming. Now, panic means a sudden, overwhelming fear that spreads quickly and causes hysteria. And God's about to speak a word, and a hurricane of confusion is about to sweep over the land. God's fist is coming down on Wall Street. And there's going to be a panic. The prophets warned that this panic, in this panic, they're going to cry for help. There, there will be a cry. All of these are boasting now. You, I told you about the, the cartoon I saw. The Titanic was steaming down, and it had U.S. economy, and up on top, not even God can sink this ship. And when it sinks, when it's going down, they will be crying and they'll be wailing. The Bible said the wind shall carry them all away, and vanity shall take them away. That means their wealth. It said the wealth will take wings and fly away because of personal arrogance, greed, and covetousness. It's going to be swept away. And Isaiah, speaking for God, said, And when they cry, let thy companies deliver thee. And what he's saying, let this complete conglomerate, all of this collection of advisors that told you everything is fine, all of these who told you that the sky's the limit, the president of Japan heard the president of Sony say that, and he said, look, we've got $800 billion invested in, in foreign exchanges, in, in foreign investments. How can a nation so rich ever fall? He said, this is weak. The same in the United States. You know what the di disciples, they, they looked at all of these great buildings of the temple in Jerusalem, and the Lord Jesus says, not one stone's going to rain upon another. And that was going to happen within 40 years. And who could believe it? And they say, the American economy, this great nation, the richest nation in the world. Prophet said, she says, I sit as the queen. And I shall never be bothered. I shall never be brought down. But God says, I saw you make your cave in the high hills. And he said, I'll bring you down to the dust. Amen. You made your nest in the skies. And I'll bring you down. Amen. When you cry, let your companies deliver you. Let your prognosticators, all those who read the stars, who told you that there's no end in sight, let them tell you how to get out. That's what the prophet said, Isaiah 57, 13. Now, folks, there are two things I see the Holy Spirit doing in this coming panic. There are two things that have to happen, and they're going to happen. They're in the process of happening now. Number one, God is going to take away all peace from the wicked. He's going to take the red horse is coming to take away peace from the earth. There is no peace, the Bible said to the wicked, Isaiah 48, 22. But there is a false peace that has come upon Wall Street and the financial markets and, a, uh, and upon Americans now. Oh, folks, listen to me. You go out into, into New Jersey. I, I have walked around in some of those fancy towns in these million-dollar states, and, and uh, you, you, you see young, rich young men who owe millions of dollars. They are mortgaged to the hilt. And you know what they say? 
It's okay. If we go down, we're all going together. We're all going down. It doesn't seem to matter. And they're sitting at the computers and they're getting every dollar they can get their hands on and gambling now on the stocks. Gambling. Folks, the stock markets are nothing now. They become nothing but major gambling halls. There is no peace to the wicked, the Bible said, but there's a false peace. And Moses talked about it. He said they're going to, re they're going to reject all the warnings, all the frightful messages coming from his prophets and, and his watchmen. And the Bible says they're going to bless themselves in their hearts, saying, we have peace, though we walk in the imagination of our own heart, and we're going to add drunkenness to thirst. We're not only going to just take a drink, we're going to get drunk on this prosperity. I don't want just a little draught. I don't want a little bit. I want to make it big. Folks, every man's out for himself now, outside of the church of Jesus Christ. Everybody's looking out for number one. Everybody's looking for their nest egg. Everybody knows that something's coming, so they want to make one last killing, get enough money in the bank, or hide it in a Swiss bank, so they can ride out the storm that's coming. They know the storm is coming. Everybody looking for golden parachute. Against such the Lord will not spare. His anger and his jealousy shall smoke against such a person. Deuteronomy 29, 20. He said, my anger will smoke against you because you've been given over to covetousness. You don't give God credit. You've moved God out of your mind, out of your systems, out of your programs. You've removed me completely. You have nothing to do with me. And now you bow at the golden altar of money. Now, there can be nothing plainer in God's word than that when God judges men for their wickedness, he takes away their peace. Listen to it. The way of peace they do not know. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made their paths crooked. Whosoever goeth in there shall never know peace. Shall never know peace. They have this false peace, but it doesn't last. There's always that inner knowing. And God is even now taking away the peace. Boy, wait till the panic hits. There will be no peace. The false peace will not see them through. Right now, there's a sea of calm. Right now, a few waves here and there. But the Bible said the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Their houses are full of deceit. Therefore, they become great and they've grown rich. They've grown fat. Are prosperous now they shine but shall I not visit for these things saith the Lord shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this God said oh yeah you've grown rich you've grown prosperous without me you say you've turned your back on me but God says shall I not move against a nation like this how much longer folks do you think God can take it how much longer do you think we can thumb our noses at God. How much longer can we no longer blush at the worst, most violent sins? How much longer can we destroy babies in their, their last trimester and sucking their brains out? Blood running like a river. How long can God put up with that and say enough without saying enough? Some might be tempted to say, well, Brother Wilson, don't tell me what God did to Israel in the Old Testament. This is America, and God needs America safe and prosperous so we can evangelize the world. Well, folks, I want you to know we're spending more now for dog food than we are on missions. That's a truth. That's a fact. Our missions programs and our churches are dying. Other than a few, like the Assemblies of God and a few other small missions groups, missions is absolutely dying. Our, our, the giving of almost every denomination toward missions is dwindling. It would be unjust of God to judge the wickedness of his own chosen people, Israel, for their sins. It would be unjust of God to take down Nineveh, to take down Rome, to take down all past societies when they got to the place that we're at right now. In fact, we've passed that place, uh, flashpoints of judgment. 
It would be unjust of God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and Noah's generation for their sins and their violence and their wickedness and then spare America. It would be unjust of a holy God. If God's a holy and just God, he's no respecter of persons. He's got to say to this wicked nation, I will surely consume you, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on your vine, no figs on your fig trees, and the leaves shall fade, and the things that I have given you shall be taken away from you. That's Jeremiah 8, 13. The things that I have given to you, I will take away from you. Folks, I'm not preaching out of my head. I'm preaching scripture. God says, I'll cause your good times to fade. I'm going to dry up and cause to wither all your riches. I'll take away your prosperity that I gave you in my mercy. And all these things that you've lusted after, I will take away. <clears throat> Folks, let me tell you, and listen closely now. These multiplied thousands who've had no time for God, they've laughed and mocked at all of our moral standards. They've made money, they're idle. They're going to lose their homes. You are going to see in the streets of America, not too distant future, almost every block you're going to see home after home after home with a for sale sign. Millions of these people who have leveraged their homes and, and speculated trying to make it rich are going to lose their home, they're going to lose their furniture, they're going to lose their cars, and it's going to be just here just like it is in Indonesia. I believe we're going to have a 60 to 70 percent devaluation of all real estate in America. I believe it's going to be just like Indonesia where 100,000 Mercedes are selling for $20,000 now, just trying to raise a little cash to make it. There's going to be mass unemployment in today's New York Times. There's a picture in, from Korea, Korea that had almost no unemployment, now near depression. They advertised for a few jobs and thousands of men showed up. You see these massive men all trying to get a job. There's going to be pain and crying and weeping. There's going to be a rush to liquidate everything to raise cash. The Bible said their houses shall be turned to others. For I'm going to stretch out my hand upon this land, Jeremiah 6, 12. Their houses shall be given to others. Recently, a scandal broke out in Japan in, 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 in what is their uh, central finance system in Japan. And a scandal broke out. The president of that, it's, it's just like our Federal Reserve. The president of their Federal Reserve committed suicide a few weeks ago, and seven of their leaders of that department all committed suicide. Folks, there will be mass suicides all over the United States. There will be suicide left and right. And it's not going to be just rich men. It's going to be ordinary people uh, and, and middle classes who, who have absolutely tried to make it rich forgotten God completely and have, have, have invested so-called investments and those investments evaporate overnight. My brother, sister, the panic is on Wall Street is going to be worse than anything this nation has ever seen. When I read Jeremiah and what he said to his nation, it seems so relevant to what I see today in America. Listen to what he said. The spoilers have come upon all your high places. The sword of the Lord has devoured from one end of the land to the other. No flesh has peace now. They have sown wheat, but they're reaping thorns now. They put themselves to pain, but they shall not profit. They shall be ashamed of their revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. They're going to be ashamed of their revenues. In other words, they're going to live in shame because they're losing everything. Folks, the Bible is clearly telling us it's as clear as you can be. There's no, there's, there's, there's no getting around it. God has outlined it, spoken clearly. Now that's the one side. I told you two things I see the Holy Spirit doing when this panic comes. And he's getting, he's even setting this up now. He's taking away all peace from the wicked. On the other hand, he's going to provide perfect peace for the righteous. 
perfect peace for the righteous. Now, let me get into this side of it because I think you're ready. Isaiah 57, 19. Hey, folks, listen to me, please. I'm not playing on your emotions. But let me, this is not easy. This is not easy to do. It's not easy to preach. This is the end of side one. You may I, I told you, I, I told you about five years ago, I, 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 or, or there was a time about 10 years ago, I don't, it wasn't that, probably eight years ago, I said, Lord, I don't want to prophesy anymore because people don't want to hear it. And I get so sick and tired of all the letters and calls and call me doomsday, even some of God pastors from all of the United States. I got tired of it. I got fed up. I said, Lord, I, I don't want to do it. And for five years, he took it away from me. And, and I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to obey him, and I'm going to speak it. But, folks, I'm, I'm trying to speak it in his love and his authority. But I want you to hear clearly now what I, I believe God and the Holy Ghost has given to me for, for you and for the church. Now, listen very, very closely. I create the fruit of the lips, Isaiah 57, 19. Peace, peace to him that is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. And in the Hebrew, it is not peace, peace, but it's perfect peace to him that's far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. In other words, for the generation that was spoken to and the far generation, which is us right here, perfect peace, and I will heal. Now, in all of America's history, for all of its, its panics, its, its uh, depressions and everything else that has happened in the past, we have never been to a point like this where we have the opportunity of seeing the Lord bring forth the greatest testimony to his glory in all of the history of this nation. Because he is going to raise up a people who have been endowed, endued with absolute perfect peace, the peace that Christ himself now enjoys at the right hand of the Father in a perfect environment. He is going to endow Dow his people with this same perfect peace. Now, it's not everybody. Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, is even going to get to heaven, let alone have peace. In perfect peace, the Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. This is a commitment that some of God's people are going to make. I am going to absolutely set my heart to seek God. I'm going to give him everything I am and all that I have. I believe what God said is coming, and I'm going to prepare as a bride. Folks, I'm not preparing to ride out a depression. I'm not preparing to ride out an economic storm. I'm preparing as a bride of Christ, because that's what this is all about. You see, what is coming to America is not judgment on the church. It's purging for the church. It's not judgment on you and me if we are loving Jesus. Not at all. Why would he judge us when we're walking in his faithfulness? This is not judging, but you see, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And he loves his bride. And he sees that his bride has been bespotted by the spirit of this age. That the prosperity that the covetousness, that the greed is creeping into his church, into his bride. And the Lord says, if I sit still much longer, I'll be losing them on the right and on the left, and I will not give my bride over to the wicked one. I will not let my bride go. And the Lord has to act. And folks, folks, this panic that's coming... This trouble that's coming is not primarily to judge the wicked. That is one of the effects of it. God says, I must judge a nation like this. But he's coming as an adventure to the wicked, but he's coming as a redeemer to the righteous. I want you to follow me on this. The prophet said, the Lord will ordain peace for us. And the word ordain there means he will bring it to us and set it up in our hearts as his very own. He's going to come into the heart and set up, and or, means ordain, I'm going to come and set up in your heart 
a faith that can't be shaken. Folks, when the panic strikes, when the ominous news begins to send shockwaves and fear across the land, and the hysteria begins to mount, all God's people are going to experience a time of, uh, some time of anxiety, just human anxiety. I will feel it, you will feel it. it, it, it it's just, it's human to just feel that immediate reaction to, my goodness, this is incredible. Just as God said. And to see it unfold, there will be a time of anxiety. But God's going to have people to have the resources to immediately take control of every thought and bring it into obedience to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ as they've been taught it. Hallelujah. God is going to devastate the economy, not only as a judgment, but it is, listen to me closely, to pluck his bride out of the contagious spirit that's in America. It's contagious. Folks, it is. On your job, all you hear them talk about are things and money. All you hear about people, what do they talk about? Their newest clothes, their newest things, the money they're making, their investments, uh, furniture, cars. You don't hear about God on your job. You don't hear about the things. That, you don't hear about judgment. You don't hear of any of that. But it's contagious because just like Lot who vexed himself night and day in the things he saw and heard, we get vexed in our spirit. But all folks all over America in the church, many, many at one time, had a, a white robe prepared to be with the Lord, adorned, studying the word and praying and seeking God. Now they're out chasing, just like everybody else, chasing the almighty dollar, trying to strike it rich. Spirit of greed and covetousness that is laid a hold of them. And God says, no, I'm not going to let it go. And folks, I believe that this is going to activate God more than anything else, motivate God to move against this nation. He says, I will not let the Spirit consume my bride. The bride of Christ consists of righteous believers from every tribe, every tongue, every nation on the face of the earth. We are a spouse to Jesus Christ. We're his bride in, wait, in waiting. But folks, the bride is becoming besotted and tainted by the spirit of wickedness. He said he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Folks, everything God does on this earth, he does it with his bride in mind, his church. Oh, everything he does, it's not just to deal with the wicked. God can do that at any time. That's not his primary goal. Everything he does, whether it's blessing or judgment, he always has his church, his bride in mind. And that's what this is all about. And this is where your true peace is going to come from. When you see it begin to happen, you say, I know God's saying something to the bride. He's purging me. He's purging his church. Folks, there's so much garbage and filth in the church of Jesus Christ. This is the only way to get it out. How else is God going to throw the damnable prosperity gospel out of the church? How's he going to do it? He's going to make, he's going to make these preachers poverty stricken. You know how many women are going to rise up and point an accusing finger and say, you've damned me? You told me that God was going to just keep me rich until I die? Whoever thought we would live to see the day when even some evangelical churches now are condoning homosexual lifestyle? That's the church. A group of ministers in Sacramento. A, 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 a group of, I think, 15 pastors with a fellowship just took in a witch in fellowship. I have the... I have the newspaper clipping, it was sent to me. 
a witch, the head of a coven, that is considered religion, and these pastors, and there's a picture in the paper, these pastors embracing the witch. Who ever thought I would, we would live to see the day that so many Christians would be surfing the network for filth and pornography? Somebody wrote me a letter and said, Brother Dave, the Bible said Satan goes about as roaring lion seeking to make devour. I'm telling you, the devil surfaces about on the internet, seeking whom he may devour. Whoever lived, thought we'd live today to see the day that there was so much adultery in the church. We see a day when so many children, young people, 15, 16 years old, have sex promiscuously at any time and feel no guilt. Even in our churches. Whoever thought we'd live to see the day that we have everything in the world brought into the church and embraced and accepted. The Bible said, but Jezreel means Jerusalem waxed fat, prospered, and kicked. You have waxed fat and you've grown thick. You've been covered over with a fatness. And then he forsook God, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And we have come to a time in the church now, even the church of Jesus Christ, where a bride is being harassed, a bride is being bespotted by the spirit of this age. Even parents now, they, all they want to do is put their kids in front of a television set and let the TV be a uh, 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 babysitter. And all, all you see even from Disney now is witchcraft and foolishness, and your kids are being inundated. And there are parents who have teenagers, they let their kids do anything now as long as they don't aggravate their kids. I see it all over the United States. I see it in the church. Can you understand why God has to move? Do you understand why God says, all right, that's enough? And God says, I'm just going to have to take away. And I want to tell you something. God's going to take this young generation, our young people and our children, he's going to take them to school. Oh, boy, is there a school coming. Goodbye, $150 sneakers. Goodbye, $90 Levi's with holes cut all over them. Goodbye to new cars and malls. Goodbye to credit cards. Goodbye to the easy living where there's no sacrifice and no willingness to work and lift a finger to do, even take the garbage out. Our young people are going to school, folks. Those, those who don't know the Lord are going to riot. That's where we're going to get the fires in this city, in our major cities, and that's where the riots are coming from, from young people who don't know God, and they're not going to have the money, and they're going to steal it, they're going to knock out the windows, and they're going to burn, and they're going to kill, because they have no moral values, they've been robbed, from their royal values by our schools and even by our churches and by our government. We've ruled it out. Now we're going to pay for it. But the Christian young people, what a wonderful day it's going to be. What a wonderful cleansing it is going to be when God levels the playing field. Oh, yes. Folks, I'm going to tell you now, there's not going to be a sport in America that doesn't go bankrupt. Baseball, basketball, hockey, because we've made it all a God. That's our God. God said, I'm going to take your gods down. Folks, they can hardly make it now. Can you imagine? A, a, a ball player the other day turned down $50 million for two years. He says, not enough. I'll tell you what. I'm not against sports. Not at all. I'm going to do a hallelujah jig. I am going to do a hallelujah jig. I'm going to dance all over my apartment and say, God, thank you for bringing that idol down. Thank you for bringing that idol down.
And that's just immediately going to release about 10 million American men can afford to go to church on Sunday morning now. Yeah. Folks, your little children, many of you have little children. If you stay faithful to God, hear me, they're going to be raised in a whole different atmosphere. They're going to have a work ethic, should the Lord tarry. They're going to have true values. Because this whole thing God is sending to straighten out our perverted values. And to preserve his bride and to wean us from the spirit of this age. To wean us because we become too involved in the things of this world. He's going to do it for me. He's going to do it for you. God's going to keep his people. God said, you're not going to have to beg for bread. You're not going to beg for bread. You're going to have a roof over your head. Now, that roof may be in with somebody else. I don't know. We heard a message this morning that should be preparing us about sharing. I was hearing something prophetic this morning. I don't know what you heard. God was telling me what I'm going to have to do one day and what you're going to have to do. When one of your Christian friends loses... Someone who gambled, somebody who was not close to the Lord, and now they've repented, and they're paying a high price. Folks, we're all going to suffer, but I'll tell you one thing. Through it all, I've got a promise for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Would you go to... Jeremiah 29, please. Hallelujah. Now, don't race down the pages to see where I'm going. You'll never find it. I want you to stand with your Bible open. If you have a King James, I want you to read it aloud with me. We're going to start with verse 11. Okay. Through 13. Just three verses. Out loud. For thus saith the Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 11. I'm so excited about this scripture. Before we read, is anybody here scared? No, not in God's sight. That, that's, that, that's what the world can't understand. How can you go and listen to, to that man preach such doom and gloom? You say, well, that's because my Jesus warned too. And then he said, rejoice when you see it all begin to happen because you're redemption. This is all about redemption. The Lord's trying to get you and me to get a new Jerusalem state of mind. Not an American lifestyle dream, but a new Jerusalem state of mind saying... After all, I'm not going to be here long. After all, this is not my home. I'm not a citizen here anymore. I'm a citizen of the new world. God's going to make it so hot, most of us are going to want to get out of Egypt. The furnace will get so hot, we'll want to go. Listen to verse 11. Read it out. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. I give you an expected end. Now, that means it's going to end. There'll come a time. We're going to come through it in his way, in his time. Everything is going to be changed after that, but we're going to come through. Verse 12, then shall you call upon me. Ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You'll find me. Find him what? All sufficient. Everything I need. Hallelujah. He's still the great I am, folks. Still the great I am. Hallelujah. I want you to turn around and shake hands with three people. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be good. Do you know where your peace comes from now, folks? It's, it's by when you see these things begin to happen. For I can look you right in the eye and I tell you with everything I know of God. I came to you from my knees. I came from the secret closet. And I'm telling you it's going to happen. But the thing that's going to, that, that will give you peace is you're going to be able to say, God has to do it. God knows it's going to be good for his church and his bride. I trust what my father's doing. If you, that's where your peace comes. I know my father's hand is in this. I know my God is doing this. And I know he said his thoughts for me are not evil. The thoughts of evil are to those who rejected him. Thoughts of, toward me are good thoughts. Wonderful thoughts. Preserving thoughts. Keeping thoughts. But folks, did you hear what I said? You're not getting information from this pastor. You're not getting information from me about how to invest or storing food. Because I'm not at all interested in just getting through a depression or getting through a financial chaos. I'm only interested in one thing, is getting you and me to a place where we are adorned as a bride. And if you're ready to meet Jesus, you're ready to meet anything else, every crisis. Hallelujah. Glory to God. By the way, if you store food, don't tell anybody. They'll be coming at you. Bang, bang, bang. All my friends that 20 years ago were storing food, within three years it got so wormy they had to throw it all away. No, he, he's our provider. He's our storehouse. He's everything we need. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we don't take your word lightly. But you did say when you see these things, even when you talk about these things, we're to rejoice. We're to rejoice. Because, Lord, these things all point to the soon return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, if we're right with you, there should be nothing but gentle rest and peace in our heart right now because the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost always reassures those who are walking in the will of God there's always that comfort that comes no matter what is preached the comfort comes and the voice of the Holy Spirit says be not afraid be still and know that I'm God I'll keep you I'll provide for you no matter how you suffer, I'll not let you bear more than you're able. And I will, with a temptation, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord for a few moments. I, I'm trying to find out what the Holy Spirit is saying here just a moment. I'm going to ask that nobody come to the altar tonight, uh, with the exception of those that I'm going to call. The Holy Spirit spoke clearly to my heart. There are three people in the balcony. They need to come down here. I believe you came together. I don't know if you're your first time or you're or a, a regular visitor or, or regular attender of this church, but there are at least three people, and I believe they came together. They need to get down this aisle because you're not right with God. God's been dealing with you. There's, there's been a drifting away from the Lord, and I want you, you would know if, while I'm speaking, if it's you and you, you come down here. And also for up in the balcony here in the main auditorium all over, the only people I want come forward are those right now who you know in your heart you're not ready to meet the Lord. You're not ready. You know it. The Holy Ghost knows it. No one else to tell you. But you're not ready. You are not ready. If Christ should come tonight, you're not ready to stand before him. I want you to get out of your seat and come. I don't want anyone else to come. If you've been coming here regularly this altar, please don't come tonight. I want only those who are not right with God and you know it. Those who are backslidden or drifted away from the Lord. God's dealing with you tonight. I want you to come right now and let me pray with you. Don't come unless you feel that drawing. And the, I don't care if it's just three or four or five people come here. I'm not just, it, 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 I'm not looking for just a, a bulk of people here. God's interested right now in getting you ready. That's what this preaching about and all the preaching lately is 
that, that everyone that comes to this church, everyone walks in these doors would be ready when they walk out to meet Jesus. Not to be ready for a depression, but to be ready to meet Jesus. Because you don't know whether this is your last night or not. Up in the balcony here on the main floor as they sing that again, come meet me here and let me pray with you and we'll believe Jesus to, to really change and touch your heart. And up in the balcony, go to the stairs on the other side and then come down any aisle. Amen. Just come and move in close. Move in close here if you will, please. Hallelujah. You can still come while I'm talking. You can still come while I'm talking to these. You can, get, you can come at any time. Amen. You can come for look this way for just a moment, please. This is going to be a wonderful time for you. This is, this is what God's been wanting for you for a long time. I'll tell you what, that took some courage to get up and just walk down the aisle and admit that you have a need. But that's what God's waiting for. He's waiting for you to take that step and cross the line now. Look this way, please. Look at me. All of you came forward. Will you take that step? The Lord draws the line and said, will you cross over that line? Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to do it your own way anymore. Come now and let me take control. I pray that every day of my life, Jesus, take control of my life. I give, I give over all my life. You control me. He said, if you surrender yourself to him, he'll take control. He really will. And he said, if you confess with your mouth all the sins that are in your heart, he'll forgive you and cleanse you. Many of you know that. Many of you have known the Lord and maybe slipped away from God. But he wants you to come back to that first love right now and surrender. Hallelujah. Listen to me, please. God doesn't want to argue with you. He doesn't want to fight with you. Because if you resist him, you can never enter in. Let go of all your resistance. The Lord's not interested in having a fight with you, trying to argue with you. He's just saying, are you willing to give me everything? Are you willing now to lay down your life, your sins, and believe me that I'll give you the power and the strength and the courage to follow it through? The Lord said, you take the step and I'll, I'll see that you, because the Bible said he's the, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one, the Holy Ghost is the one that brought you down the aisle here, and he's the one that will keep you and finish you. To that wonderful day when you stand before him. Amen. How many are ready to surrender everything of your life to Jesus? Raise your hand, please. You say, I'm here to surrender everything to Christ. All right, keep your hand raised. Just keep it raised right there. Pray this with me right now. Jesus, say it loud. Jesus, here I stand to give you my sins, all my doubts and fears, everything I am and all that I have. I give you my heart. Lord Jesus, forgive me and cleanse me of my stubbornness, my foolishness, and my sins. Lord Jesus, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you. I've come to give you my heart. Receive it now. Come into my life. Holy Spirit, give me an understanding of what I'm to do. And give me power to do what you command me to do. Jesus, teach me to love you and teach me to follow you. All right, now I'm going to pray for you while you have your hand raised. Right there, just right you're at. I'm going to pray for you right now. Ask, ask the Holy Spirit to finish the work. Father, I pray right now that you send the Holy Spirit and you lay hold of every heart. Give, give everyone the knowledge that's standing here right now that God has heard this prayer, and it's the beginning. Lord, it's not the end. It's just the beginning. Of op it's the opening of the door to let Jesus come in now and do his work, and to, the, the Holy Spirit would come in right now to open up the truth of Christ, open up the gospel, open up the heart that says, Lord, I'm going to keep following you. I'm going to press in till I find everything I'm looking for in you, Jesus. Now, pray that with me right now. Jesus, I'm giving everything to you. Say it right in your own words. Lord, I'm giving you my heart. I give you my sins. I'm coming back to you, Jesus. And I know that you'll prepare me for your coming. Hallelujah. Now, thank him in your own words. Just thank him. Lord, I give you thanks. I give you praise. For you are faithful. You're loving. And you're kind. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, we love you. Amen. Can you say you love him? Just say it out. Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for touching me. Amen. Praise God. This is the conclusion of the tape.